right, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2008 Ford F-250. Up front is a 6.4 liter turbocharged diesel V8 and down below is a five speed automatic transmission. Now I'm super excited to be driving this here F-250 for a couple of reasons. First of all, it only has around 77,000 miles on it, meaning that this is in the world of F-250s, a pretty low mileage survivor. But the second reason, is the fact that I don't do a whole lot of diesel trucks here on the channel, and so I'm always excited to do something different, unique, and fun. But let's get back to that 6.4 liter turbocharged diesel V8 under the hood. Well, you'll see it advertised in some locations as a twin turbo. It's really a compound turbo, meaning that there is a smaller turbo feeding into a larger turbo, which gives you the power. It makes 350 horsepower, which isn't crazy, but 650 foot-pounds of torque from the factory. Now, this truck has had a little bit of work done to it, a little bit here, a little bit there, but 650 foot-pounds from the factory is fantastic. However, there is an issue with the 6.4s when you get into modifying them, they tend to have exhaust temperature issues. <laughs> Kenny wasn't lying. It's a rowdy truck. It's a powerful, powerful truck. This engine was also only offered from 2008 till 2010. So it's an, only a three year engine. Hi, post filming Zach here. Um, while I was driving this here truck, I feel like I went a little too easy on the 6.4 liter power stroke. After doing more research after driving this truck, I have come to realize that it is not a good engine at all. I did a quick little Google search to see what the exact issue is with the 6.4 liter of why people dislike them so much, just so I could, you know, know from my personal knowledge. And a list came up. A list. As well as there are multiple videos on YouTube explaining why everything about these motors is just not very good, which is why they only made them for three years. And now, 12 years later, parts availability is going to become a huge struggle. So, just something to know if you're going to look for a vehicle like this with the 6.4 liter power stroke, not only will you have some reliability issues, especially if you end up modifying the truck, but parts availability is going to become harder and harder and harder. Just so you're aware, I highly recommend doing your own research on the 6.4 liter and coming to your own conclusions if it's worth it. But to me, there are several red flags. Like I said, paired to it is that automatic transmission. And honestly, that's one of the downsides of this truck. It's shifting not quite at the times I would want it to. It doesn't really kick down right away, but then again, you have so much torque that sometimes you don't even really need it to kick down. So for all intended purposes, it's a fine transmission. Last but not least, of course, the F-250 is four wheel drive. And we'll talk about how to select that a little bit later on. So let's talk about the interior. We have plenty to talk about in here. Well, in front of me, I have a bunch of gauges. On the left is my tachometer, which tops out at 5,000, which is just so funny to me. Up in the center, I do have boost pressure, coolant temperature, transmission temperature, and fuel. And then on the right, I have my speedometer. I also get a little information gauge and what gear I'm in down below. This is very standard forward, but I like the look of it. Moving on to the steering wheel on the left, I have my cruise control options, as well as my fan speed. On the right, I have my media, seek, volume, things of that nature, as well as my temperature. So I do get climate controls on the steering wheel. I think this desperately needs to make a comeback in cars. I love having my climate controls right at my thumbs while I'm driving. I don't have to reach over and press anything, which is fantastic. Off to the left, I do have an added screen. This is an aftermarket little screen, but something you can add to your F-250 if you'd like to, mainly used for monitoring those exhaust temperatures I mentioned earlier. Then I have my headlight switches, gauge dimmer switches, nothing really too crazy past that. On the door up at the top, I have two different memory seat options, as well as my mirror switches and my mirror folding options. So this does have the bigger mirrors for the F-250 and I can actually fold them in at the push of a button. Then I have my power windows, power locks, and child locks. Moving into the center, I have two climate control vents and a aftermarket radio. This has since been changed out because Apple CarPlay is just better. 
And down below that we have the climate controls themselves. I do have heated seats, which are very toasty, but I am pleasantly enjoying them on this 30 degree day. As well as I do have dual zone climate, which is very, very nice. To the left of that, I have my four wheel drive settings. So I have regular two wheel drive, four high and four low, of course, and my reverse parking sensors I can toggle on and off. But with the size of this truck, I am keeping those on. And even further to the left of that on the center console, I do have a switch for the rear window. So although I have a bed cap, I do have a power rear window that I can open and close. So if you didn't have a bed cap on a nice summer day, you can get a nice little breeze in here or something of that sort. Down below the climate controls in the center console, I do have my trailer brake adjusters. Off to the left, I have my power pedal adjustments. And off to the right, I have four auxiliary switches. Now these are standard from Ford to do absolutely nothing. That's right, they put switches in here to do nothing. What they're there for is so if you hook up a light bar or any other electrical piece of equipment that you would run to a switch, you can run them directly to this switch without making a huge mess of your interior. You know, back in the 90s, when you added a light bar and things like that, you had to run this AutoZone cheap switch to under your seats and there's wires everywhere and it was just really, really ugly. But ever since the mid 2000s, auto manufacturers have been offering these dead switches for modifying your truck, whether that be a snow plow, a light bar, an air compressor, anything you wanna hook up to a switch, you can put it right here. It looks clean, it looks OEM, but we'll do some fun things. Then I do have fold out cup holders, so we'll do a big freaking bottle test and it passes. Of course it does, because Ford trucks are really good about fitting these big friggin' bottles. And in 2008, that's no exception. <laughs> Moving on to the center console, I do have a fold down center console with a little cubby, as well as two more cup holders. These cup holders also fit the big freaking bottle, but not nearly as well. The seats are nice and comfortable. They are power, they are memory, as well as I do have a bench seat up here and the driver and passenger seats are heated, which again, I'm enjoying very thoroughly on this 30 degree day. But speaking of seats, we do have back seats. So let's go do a back seat review. All right, so we're in the back of the 2008 Ford F-250 Super Duty. And man, if I ever get evicted, I am calling Kenny the owner of this truck because I honestly could live and work back here pretty flawlessly. My knees have like six inches before they hit the seat in front of me. I of course have power windows, power locks, all that sort of thing. I actually even have a center console down here with two cup holders, which is nice. And this is that power window we were talking about earlier that will actually slide open. I do have lights up here even, which have been swapped out for LEDs. I love it back here. I could spread fully out back here and it would not be an issue. Fantastic back seat, not only just for a truck, but for a vehicle, love that. Let's go take a quick look at the bed and tailgate, and then we'll talk about the looks. All right, so we're on the back of the F-250. Now, this truck is used for truck purposes, so it has a bunch of firewood back here and a giant spare tire, but we can lift this up right here and I mean, just look at all the space back here. Nothing really too interesting about the bed. However, it does have Ford's help up system. There you go. So you can actually fold out a step and then you use this, see, step on that, pull yourself up with that and you can get into the bed way easier than without it. So very, very nice features. And this bed cap really does make a difference. Now, of course, this is not standard on all F-250 Super Duties, but it's definitely a nice addition. Now we gotta talk about the looks, and I really love the look of this F-250. I think the bed cap really adds to it, but just how clean it is. It is two-toned from the factory with this nice sort of gunmetal gray and black accents at the bottom. The wheels are 22 by 12 and they are made by fuel, but this truck is stock ride height. There's no lift kit, no leveling kit or anything like that. And like the engine, this body style only lasted from 2008 until 2010. So it's a very short generation of the F-250 or Super Duty F-Series, which let's get to my final thoughts about. What do I think about this behemoth of a truck? Well, I love it. 
I really, really do. This truck does everything I could possibly want it to do and more. It is fun to drive in a sort of brutish way. If I was on a canyon road, I wouldn't have so much confidence, but in a straight line, this truck is a lot of fun. You just can't escape the size of it. It is absolutely massive. But the interior has fantastic features. The heated seats make it super comfortable. All the materials in here have held up really well over the last 12-ish years. I think it looks good. The diesel is certainly powerful enough. And some people don't really love this engine, the 6.4. It's a rather short-lived engine. However, I think any engine living in the shadow of the 7.3 liter is gonna get some hate. But other than that, this is fantastic. It's a really cool truck. It's such a good looking truck. And honestly, I would be proud to own it. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to my good friend, Kenny. He's been a supporter for a very long time. I've known him throughout many, many of his vehicles, like the Harley Davidson F250, like the FC RX-7, which is how we met way back in the day. It feels like we were just kids then. And so he's absolutely awesome for letting me take out his F-250. This thing is beautiful. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.